Jackson Seminary as I've been going through the book of Daniel with you. And I uh, just want to clarify a little bit more on chapter 9 of Daniel, and that is the vision that he had. And we talked a little bit more uh, in previous chapters of other books of the Bible about how prophets often saw just mountaintops. And I think that really uh, John Phillips has a great chart that helps to show exactly what Daniel saw in chapter 9 and uh, what he didn't see in chapter 9, uh, but may have revealed to us. So let's take a look at this chart that John Phillips made and uh, see if we can't understand a little bit better the vision that Daniel may have had in chapter 9. Looking to the far left, you'll see the number 1. That represents Daniel and his vision uh, in chapter 9. Uh, but he also, in chapter 11, sees all the way to point C, like Charlie, uh, and kind of misses B and doesn't have the same vision as the New Testament prophet it represented by the number 2. But Daniel also saw not only the short-term prophecies, uh, that is, in chapter 11, he sees the era of Antiochus, uh, which is really basically what we call the uh, 400 silent years. But they, they weren't silent as far as history was concerned. They were just silent as far as what the Bible reveals as actual events during that time. But Daniel saw them and uh, details them in quite great detail. That's why so many uh, of the agnostics want to say that Daniel doesn't belong in the Bible or that it's not accurate uh, because it so details the actual history uh, of almost 400 silent years. But you can see that Daniel saw uh, not only what was coming in a short term, uh, that was in the 400 years after he wrote, uh, but he also saw the coming of Christ, the first coming, the first advent, as uh, a redeemer. And then you see the and illustration point C, he sees Jesus coming to rule and to reign. Uh, as Whereas the New Testament prophets saw the rapture of the church and they saw the second coming of Christ. I thought this drawing was quite helpful uh, to better understand uh, exactly what Daniel was writing in 9, uh, what is alluded to in chapter 10, but even more importantly in chapter 11, uh, Daniel sees the detail of those 400 silent years, if you will. And uh, I think that's quite interesting. Uh, we're going to be looking uh, at that just very briefly today and maybe expand on it a little bit more in the next session. Uh, but uh, we'll take a look at another chart in a minute. Now, as I was studying, one of the things that I wanted to know was a timeline in years uh, of what Daniel saw and also when Daniel wrote to see about these prophecies. So let me just clarify. Daniel wrote approximately from 605 down to 536 B.C., before Christ. So he wrote during that 70-year captivity period uh, when the nation of Israel was in captivity to Babylon. However, when he was given the prophecies, of chapter 9 through 11. Uh, he's writing about a period which is not only uh, the 70 years of captivity, but then he writes about a timeline from about 305 BC all the way down to 142 BC. I'm sorry, 164 BC. 164 BC. So he writes about 150 years of that 400 silent years and the events that occurred in there. And the chart that I'm getting ready to put up on the screen for you, I'm not going to leave it up for a long time because I want you to be able to come back and stop the video and look at that timeline chart and all of the kings of both Egypt and Syria. Because during this period of time, there's constant conflict between the king of the north, which is Syria, and the king of the south, which is Egypt. Now, there are many kings during that time. And it gets really confusing because we have uh, King 
Roman numeral one through Roman numeral three, and we have kings with a different second name to apply to them, uh, and it can get really confusing. And you even have towards the end of this period, when the Roman Empire is starting to wake up and starting to become a factor at the very end of this period of time. Uh, so you see all of Daniel's pictures of the different kingdoms coming into play, but you also see now the details. Oh, there's so many things here. We have uh, Cleopatra, which maybe you thought was just a fictional story, but uh, a real person uh, during this time. You, you see uh, these huge battles of thousands, hundreds of thousands of ships, uh, 300 to 500 ships uh, by these different forces, and they're battling. And between the north, Syria, and the south, Egypt, guess what little nation is stuck between those? Who becomes a battleground and who falsely chooses to be allies with one or the other, uh, and who's constantly in turmoil as various kings and powers come in and through their land, and eventually the temple is defiled vastly. Uh, and Daniel sees it all. He sees it all in detail, but he sees it more than 200 years, or about 230 years before it happens. No wonder so many people didn't want to give any credibility to Daniel. Uh, Daniel makes such a great point of argument about uh, how God is in control. And even though the Bible doesn't tell us uh, the stories, history tells us the stories of what Daniel saw. And it's incredible. So let me put that chart up. I hope you'll come back to it. I'm going to leave it up just for a few seconds, just so we have a big wide span to, to come in and, and freeze it. But uh, uh, to take a look at that chart and see all of the events that occurred during what is silent in the Bible, but Daniel fully saw. On the far left, you see the nation of Egypt, or the king to the south, and you see the different kings and leaders that were in there. On the far right-hand side, you see the timeline in the years B.C., and you also see Syria and the rulers of Syria that were involved in this vision of Daniel that he had uh, that so details a uh, good part of the 400 silent years. You'll also notice I've highlighted in yellow the verses so that as you read through chapter 11, you can actually start at the top of the chart and read the verses that are highlighted and starts at verse 5 and goes all the way through verse uh, 28. So I hope that you'll use this chart to better understand all of those things that Daniel saw that happened during those 400 silent years and see how accurate it was. Uh, at the end of this clip, uh, end of this uh, devotion, I'm going to put a, a uh, site that you can actually see a little bit of this history uh, from a more secular source. So I hope that you'll watch that as well. This is fascinating stuff. It really is. Okay, I told you that history was fascinating, and I hope that you will look at the video that I've put at the very end of this devotion uh, prior to the credits, if you will. Uh, but I want you to understand that there is application for all of this, and that is very, very important. I know you're going to be fascinated by the history, and some of you will, and some of you won't take the time to research all of this, read through chapter 11, looking at that chart. Uh, or watch the little clip that I've given to you to uh, see on YouTube. But nevertheless, the application is clear. Daniel saw in detail, 230 years before it happened, all of the mess that this world was in uh, with Syria and Egypt and the little nation of Judah sandwiched in between. He saw it all, and it gives credibility to the scriptures. Number two. It also shows that while God is on his throne and in control, he does some pretty strange things. He uses evil forces to bring about his will. He actually uses evil forces to bring about his will. Uh, we can apply that to today's uh, situation with the election. You sit back and you say, wait a minute. Uh, Donald Trump was arrogant 
Donald Trump was uh, uh, using uh, language and uh, slandering and and calling people names and how could God possibly use him? Well, he did. He, he put people on the Supreme Court that will probably help substantially with some of the major Christian issues that we have today. Uh, there's no question uh, that when we look at the position or platform of the Republican Party versus the platform of the Democratic Party, uh, setting aside ecology, uh, we, we certainly see Christian values more on the Republican side than on the Democratic side. Uh, and uh, don't be surprised if we start to see some real restraints put on the Christian world uh, because, let's face it, the Christian world voted uh, in a large degree for the Republican platform rather than the Democratic platform. So don't be surprised. God's not going to be surprised. If, if, in fact, this election holds and every evidence seems to be that it's going to hold, uh, although I'd never rule out God's hand uh, revealing massive fraud, uh, I, it really appears that, that, uh, that this election is going to stand. Nevertheless, uh, God's in control. And he wants us to know that. He, he wants us to know that over the course of history, many strange things have happened. And this particular period of history that Daniel sees is one of those very good examples of how God's in control, even though the world's in a mess. And finally, I want you to know in the end, we win. You see, God's timeline, that second advent is going to happen. We may not be that far away from it. And if you looked at that chart that John Phillips had up there, you'll see that there's a rapture of the church. If you're a premillennialist, uh, you'll see a rapture of the church uh, before we have the tribulation. And, and that's good news for those of us that believe that's the sequence that is going to all occur. Nevertheless, that's my thought for the day. Don't forget to look at the video clip that I've uh, given you a link to uh, on YouTube. Uh, it will help you to understand this time period. Going back to that chart and reading chapter 11, will help you a great deal also. God bless. Have a great day.